Hi, my name is Janet Skinner. Sometimes in life we need a purpose to continue. And back in the early 1990s, I was looking for a reason to live, if you like. Um, just happened by accident one day that I saw that Jibung Station, which is in Queensland, was going to be demolished and replaced. So I decided to paint it. And during the 1990s, I painted 104 railway scenes and that kept me going. As I sat on the platform and railway sidings, old people would come over and speak to me and tell me about life in the good old days. These were elderly people. It transpired that many of them were born in the early 1900s. I wrote down their names and phone numbers and I went back and interviewed them. There's a series of some 35 railway tapes that I'm making of the interviews that I recorded in New South Wales and Queensland. I'm not a journalist. I've got no background training in interviewing. And I really hope you enjoy these films. Um, I hope they bring laughter to many and insight into as what life used to be like. And please bear with me. I had fun doing them and I hope you have fun listening to them. Thank you so much. So you've been in High Street, you've been in High Street in New Road. Yeah, the house at the moment that's up there is not as it was, it's been added to. Yeah. It was only a small, they called it a, um, a worker's dwelling at the time. Everybody's house was built as a worker's dwelling, similar to what the present system is where, you know, you get um, paid or you, you can pay it off at a, at a reasonable price, you know. So did your family, did they work for the railway? Or no, no, my father worked at Hutton's factory at Zilmia. Mm -hmm. um, that was in, where did you get the information from that the, um, the station building was moved from Zilmia to Dubai? That was through my father. Mm -hmm. See, he worked up at Hutton's at the time. And, uh, well, it, it, he, um, he worked up at Hutton's when he, from when he left school. Mm -hmm. In those years, people didn't go to further education, mm. they just left state school and went into a position wherever they could get a job. Mm. And of course, the area around here, everybody worked at either Hutton's factory up in mm. Zulmere or down at the Brickyards, mm. which was down here at Virginia. And did your dad remember the station being moved to you? Oh yes. Mm. See, He's already in your book and tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, well, see, the station uh, at Zulmere, when they uh, were, see, they, they had a siding going into Hutton's factory to bring in the peeps mm -hmm. and uh, the station wasn't quite big enough to accommodate what they needed at the time. Right. This was at Zulmia. At Zulmia, yeah. you see. So of course uh, G-Bung station was only a tiny station as I told you, mm -hmm. it was on one side of the line yes. and uh, it, it, it only really was this tiny little ticket office which, by the way, they had to write out the tickets. They didn't have a punching machine in those days. Mm. They would write them out like a little mm. receipt. Yes. And um, so it was decided that the station that was up at Zulmia mm. should be brought down to Gbung. The, the, the little old first station rolled across the line. Of course, they took that across the line by, with draft horses and, and on, on uh, like, skids and rollers type of thing, you know. Mm. And they got that across the line. Well, then... At that time, too, there was only one railway line. And, uh, of course, the second railway line, they, they only had three trains through the day, which only meant that one railway line didn't matter. You know, the, the, the know, train the going in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, of course, um, then at that stage, when they brought the other station down to Zulmia and put it down here, uh, they then, at that same time, was putting through the other railway line. So we had two railway lines then, yeah. and we had two 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 buildings, yeah. the little station yeah. on this side, yeah. and the. Did they raise the platform at the same time as that? No, no. The, yeah. the platform was raised in degrees. Yeah. 
you know, it, at, at that stage you had to uh, climb up into the train mm. and of course it was the um, the job of the of the guard and the station mistress to make sure that everybody was in the train before they, uh, you know, and shut the doors. Mm-hmm. There was one character in the district here that used to always just climb into the into the train and sit down and not shut the door. Mm-hmm. You know, he sort of thought, well, he just got in, sat down, and they used to have to come and shut the door. <laughs> Whether it was the exertion of climbing in the train or whatever. Do you don't know when it reached its final height? Do they then? You don't know when it got there. I would say it might have had about three or four different heights. You'd find that out by looking at the um, front of the of the station of the the line. Where do they see? Sometimes with with stations, you can see those different yeah. lines. Yeah, we'll look at that. yeah. yeah I've, I've never ever taken notice, but yeah. but uh, see at the start, it was timber that was holding the station. Yes. See? Yes. And then it, it, later on, as it went, it changed yeah, to to, right. to cement, and, or it had a brick. Yeah, there was a brick one, and then it changed to a cement. Yeah. And then we've got the full cement on the top, as we know today. Yeah. See, in the first uh, years, it was all that ant bed type of. You know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't cemented. The name G Ball to G Bun. Well, I understood that that was a spelling mistake in the railway path. No, no. The reason why it was from G Bong to G Bung was because in the early years the mail went to G Long. Yeah. See, there was no when when people address the mail on their cards. There is a, a, a copy of one in that book in my book there. Right. Um, How did there you was find no that? Queensland or anything. It was How just. How did you find that sensation? Because I've read in one of the railway books in the city. I'm going to have to go and find it now. But they said in there that it was a spelling mistake on the station, and that was the book that I read. Mm-hmm. Now, well, I, I, I would uh, wouldn't sort of agree with that because it was my mm-hmm. grandfather mm-hmm. that thought it was a huge joke about it, mm-hmm. and he told me that when they named the the station yes. G Bong, yes, uh, that. Uh, we had on our, he had on his um, uh, address, uh, his address on his cards and, and letters that came out from England. It was, his name was George Church, of course. It was Mr. G. Church, G. Bomb. Yeah. And what was happening was the mail was going to G. Long. Yes, because of being the oldest. See, person. because it looked, people in those years didn't have a very good education whether they could write properly or read properly was yeah. an, you know yeah. so they everything was going to g long yeah. so then what they did was change it to g bung yeah. and to be doubly careful they had to add n c l which was north coast line yeah. see so that was how it came to be that they changed it from g bung to g bung yeah. but there was there's there's been a couple of things that have has been recorded by the railway department that um, I don't know where they've got it from, but uh, they even had in one letter or in one um, something or other they've written out that G G Bong was uh, was a part of it was was the name of a dead horse or something or other, and of course this I, as I said to them was. That during the time that they wanted to change the name, see, people hated the name of G Bung. They, ch- they tried and lots of other names. In, didn't they? in my second book, the one that follows this, there's quite a story about how the Progress Association changed the name. Mm. And uh, and this was that one of these letters that was sent in from one of the, from the Progress, uh, well, the man that wrote the letters. That was the secretary of the progress at the time. His wife would not have anything delivered out here because she hated the name so much, and she didn't want to tell anybody that she lived at Jeeba. Yeah. So I would say that it was Eric. I did not say his name, but he was the one that wrote in the letter that it sounded like the name of a dead horse. Mm-hmm. See. So then probably a clerk in the railway department got this letter and thought it was something to do with the dead horse. But it didn't. See, it was to do with that, that 
that's the tree and the flower and the fruit of the G-bong tree. Right. And they, yeah. give it, they give a list of whole names that they were going to choose, don't they? Well, it was, it, it was, um, there was, uh, there was various names mm. that were offered and um, it did change its name for two years. And um, like over in the post office, mm. it was Grennington, mm. which was across the road from the railway station. But on the station, they wouldn't take the sign down. The G-Bun department, uh, the g um, the railway department, I should say, wouldn't take the sign down, see. And the Progress Association spent months writing to different organisations, demanding why, you know, uh, they sent to the local authority, to the railway department, to the, uh, uh, oh, where else was it? But anyway, they spent months trying to get the name changed. They even beautified the station with gardens to try and get the name changed. What, what year was this then? Oh, it would have been. Um, oh. I probably got it anyway because I know I already researched it. Around about 1915. Oh, no, 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 no. Later it was than a bit later than that because the Progress Association didn't, um, didn't get started until 1920. See, my grandmother, that was, see, that was another thing. I had two grandparents here, my mother's grandparents and my father's grandparents. And my mother's grandparents, they were one of the first ones to join the Progress Association. And it was, um, it was started in a house because we didn't have a hall there then. We just keep to the railway because, mm -hmm. um, was there a, did you say there used to be a station master's house? Was that next door? Well, the station master's house is in there. You can yeah. see it on the photo in there. And it was a little cottage type of thing. See, this, can you remember this, that, being there that building there was put up in later years yeah. for to sell newspapers, yeah. see? And then that, the, um, the building, I think you've got to push uh, the edges put back somewhere there. See, so you can just see the building mm -hmm. sticking out from there. And it was like a little cottage. You know those um, uh, ones that have the hallway down the centre? Yes. With one of those yes. sort. And it had like a little enclosed veranda on the farm. And between the house and the railway station was a big double gate. And if anybody had to bring anything onto the station by vehicle, they could open this double gate and drive in. But uh, I don't think too many people did it. Well then on this side was where the siding went out that they built originally in the first place for, for, for um, Gurns' pigs. Mm. See, Gurns, you know, over here in Buhod Street, over the hill? Yes. No, no. They used to unload their pigs on the G-Bung station. Of course, that was another thing that uh, they objected to was all these pigs coming onto the station because they didn't mm. like the idea of pigs running around. They had a, a, a very ingenious plan of getting those pigs off the where well, they right. sprinkled the corn, they, you see, yeah, up there. Yeah, they used to put handfuls of corn. All the children used to t show up and they'd get, they'd get that thruppence, as grandfather put it. Because thru that was thruppence. We used to call it thruppence in those days. And uh, they put a, a, a handful of corn, you know, up the hill. And of course, the pigs would run from one handful to the other. Mm. And then they'd get them over the top. Well, see, to get did your the grandfather work there, did he? Excuse me, no, no, well, grandfather had his farm just up here on the hill, right. see, and of course he, he could see everything that was going on. Well, what sort of year was this with the pigs? Mm -hmm. Do you know? Well, is that in the Gerns? Yeah, Gerns is in here. Um, oh, let me think, when he came out. Oh, he would have been around about eight, in the late 1800s, yeah. see, he came out. He first went to Hutton's and learnt, oh, well, didn't exactly learn the trade. But he was he was a he was European Gerns. He was from around Germany there somewhere, mm. and um, he had his own recipes. But then to find out how to run uh, a factory, mm. he went to Hutton's and worked there for a short time. Mm. Then he he started up here mm. and there. But I have no mention of him in the factory at Hutton more or less. I've just got it where he established mm. it over here. Mm. But I was told by my grandfather anyway that Goons went to Hutton's first, mm. learned how, then went, then he opened. But then his family, the family told me that uh, they had their, their, uh, back, their um, Goons uh, shop 
in Brisbane, in Roma Street, and then they they expanded out here. Yeah. You know, it was at the time when they had to um, uh, when there was a problem. Uh, there was a lot of bitterness about Germans and English, especially during World War One. Do you remember this yourself, this little station? Or was that gone when you Oh, yeah, I remember that. that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That, that, it's not that long ago since they pulled that no. house down. Right. They really pulled it down to expand the um, car park. Yes. Right. Actually, that, that house was still there when I was going to work. Do you remember the old station across the road yourself? Yes. Right. Yes, because my, my aunt used to walk over from Florence Park or over in Blackwood Road, and they, or they, they used to call it Florence Park. And uh, it used to be a case of people in those days were very concerned about uh, their clothing mm. and especially their shoes. And if they had a good pair of shoes that they wore to town or went to work in, they didn't like to wear those shoes when they walked a long distance from the train. And of course another thing was too, the roads weren't that great, you know, they were all dusty and yeah. if it was raining yeah, yeah. they'd be all boggy. Yeah. And um, that little station that was on this side yeah. was used mainly for people to change their shoes. And they used to leave their shoes in the station, they just take their old shoes off, put them in the station underneath the seat, and then when they come home in the afternoon or from work, later on in the evening, I'd say, uh, their shoes would be sitting there. Nobody ever touched anything. You know, everything was, uh, well, you know, people respected other people's things in those days. You know, nobody would touch a thing, yeah. really. And of course, uh, my aunt always used that side there. And of course, when you got off the train, if you come home from town, it was raining. Everybody would have to try and get in this little tiny wee yeah. area out of the rain. Was it just on an open way? Was it open sort of building? Was it, it was just like, like the, this building here. Yeah. And see, there's that. There's that. Uh, what they did, they they put a, a toilet under here later on. Yeah. But there was sort of like an opening here, and this ticket office had like a little um, tiny wee ticket. Uh, you know, it was sort of like a, a counter, a little counter, yeah. but it was just more or less in a hole in the wall, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, I and uh, the one on this side would have been about as big as that. Yeah. You know, they, because the, the, the little office was would only take one person. Right. Yeah. So you left your shoes in what was like a waiting area, did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, there was no ticket sold over there. No. If you wanted a ticket, the majority of people used to jump down onto the line and get across the... Was there still the bridge there though? No, yep. no, nobody went, would no, even worry about bridge, it. No. Because there was, wasn't that many trains. No. And uh, there was sort of like a, a wooden, uh, oh, I suppose you call it pathway sort of that went across the line. No. And then if you wanted the more sedate people, you know, like ladies couldn't get up and down here as good as the men, and you'd, you'd walk around the, the edge of the platform and then come up this side.